Welcome to part two of this exercise. What we're going to do this time is add a second set of data to our table and then look to extract both sets to our report. Unfortunately, VLOOKUP is no longer going to work for us because what VLOOKUP will do is it will only find and extract the first record in a table that meets our criteria. So given that our criteria is simply the name of an athlete, VLOOKUP isn't the solution for us. But we can do an index and match combination like we did in video number 83 to extract both the first and the second and if there were more records we could extract them as well. I've slightly reorganized this table just to give us a little bit more space and I've deleted out our previously extracted information. So if we go to the table sheet we can see now that there's also an in-season data set for each athlete with slightly modified data. One of the ways that we can do the extraction, and the way that is the easiest to understand, is to use a helper column. Now this helper column can be anywhere, but I'm going to put it in here, right next to the athlete name and date, just so that we can see it a bit more clearly. I'm going to call it helper, and I'm simply going to use the equal sign, click on the athlete name, click on the date, and hit enter. And we just get a joined string here. It looks a little bit weird because it's applied a general format to that date. And so as a consequence it's showing up as a number of days. But we don't need that to look good. We just need it to exist. So I'm going to make that really small and almost hide it from view. And to allow us to extract the information that we're looking for, we need to know the date of the two tests. So I'm going to put that in. I know the first was on the 10th of the 1st, 2013, and the second was on the 15th of the 3rd, 2013. What we can now do, just like we did in that helper column, is combine the name and the date. And we can use the match function to tell us which row that particular record is in. So if I type match, I click on this combined string, I go to my table, and when I hit the square bracket, we've got this lovely helper column available to choose from. That's telling us that in row 32 and 82 of the table, so I've got everything I need now to do a whole series of index functions. If we remember that our table is called SF data, and that with a square bracket we can choose which column we want to reference from, we've got our row number right here. It is row number 32, and I can use F4 to lock that, and that's all I need. Can drag that across to get training phase. Body weight just needs a better format. LMI will need to be edited because it is far across to the right. But once we've picked LMI, we should be able to drag that across and just check it out. Percent fat, lean mass kg. So that's perfect. To make our table look a little bit better, what I think I'm going to do is drag this up the top and have these two numbers be a part of this table instead. Choose sum of 8 and the column next to it sum of 7 so that's easy. Let's complete the rest of this top part of the table now. Now I wasn't very smart with the way I did that referencing. If I'd taken that dollar sign away and left it only on column G, then I could have just dragged down. It shouldn't take us too long to get it all sorted. If I select this whole group here and I use my Control H keyboard shortcut, we get a find and replace. 
Now if I replace dollar $G$ dollar $2$ with dollar $G$ dollar $3$ Then it's going to do what we want. Let's try out a different athlete and it's all updating just fine. Let's fill in the bottom part of this table. We need to do index just like before. Pick our table. The square bracket allows us to choose that first skin fold record. And this time I won't make the mistake. I just want to have G with a dollar sign but not two. Drag that down and drag both all the way to the right. Now if I right click this chart and edit our series that should populate nicely and add a second series And there's our chart. Not sure if you need to have data labels on there, but I did it for the first series, so I'm going to do it for the second one as well. I'll just add a legend, put it underneath, and there's a little bit more to work with. Tidy up the formats, and I'm pretty happy now that I've got two sets of data extracted. What I wanted to do was just add a little feature to this chart by having some reference information in there. And so what I mean by that is have a position average and have a team average. And so we've got to use a new formula to extract this out, but it should be fairly easy for us. Now I'm just going to decide to do the overall position average for body weight rather than the date specific. That makes the formula pretty easy. I can use an average if. What we have to do is choose the range where our criteria is. And so because we're doing an average by position, that's where our criteria is. Our criteria is defender, so we can choose that simply by clicking on the cell and locking it. And our average range the range that we want to get the average for is body weight. Use the Format Painter to pull that down. Team average is a bit simpler. All I have to refer to is the average field. This isn't a particularly good metric, especially for body weight, um, but just trying to show you some of the analysis that you can do in these kinds of reports. Much more appropriate for other fitness tests, perhaps. And so again, just for illustration purposes, I'm going to go back to my data table. If we can scroll to the bottom, we can see I've just got another very small data set in here, only for a few athletes. It's not included in the table and you can tell that because the table formats haven't been applied. If I delete these rows and I pull this handle down, what we'll find however is that the table format swallows it up. And so we can repeat the process, add that third record to the grid using exactly the same thing as we did before, identifying the row lookup and then the index function just extracts out what we need. What this also starts to create is the ability to add additional charts such as to, uh, to plot some of the key things like like body weight for example and also overlaying that with whichever your key metric is, let's say sum of 8.
And so now, as you can see, we've got a second chart on there. And as long as we choose one of the people at the top of the list, we're going to get updates there. We could add different labels and things to these charts, but I'm just going to leave that for now. So the key to it working is this helper column up here. I could make that white so we don't see it, or even better, I could move it off to the side so that I could uh, put a logo or something else in there. But nevertheless, it's that row number, which is key to this report process working and allowing us to extract out that unique item that we were seeking. In the next two videos, I'll be expanding this concept out further by using a much larger data set of fitness testing information and we can go through some of the options that you might consider, such as rather than having three specific records extracted, you might just want the most recent three records. So we'll look at things like that in the next video. So come by again soon. Cheers.